Just across the street from Kinnick Stadium is the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. It's a gorgeous state-of-the-art facility, but it's one that obviously houses some heart-wrenching stories. For the last six years, young patients have been making the trip from the hospital to Kinnick to take part in a program called Kid Captain. Mike Hall introduces us to one of those captains for whom the Hawkeye football team quite literally is family. Kinnick Stadium, a mythical place for scores of children throughout the state of Iowa who fantasize of one day donning the traditional black and gold on autumn Saturdays. On behalf of everybody at UI Children's Hospital and the Iowa Hawkeyes, we want to welcome you to Kids Day at Kinnick and the official kickoff of our 2015 Kick Captain season. Each year since 2009, 13 of the toughest patients at the Iowa Children's Hospital visit this civic treasure through the Kid Captain program. The Hawkeyes honor each young warrior with a memorable Iowa football experience. Are we the first one in? Now this hall right here. Let's go, pal. This year, five-year-old Lincoln Orton was first in line. Let's go ahead. Whoa! What the crap? When we told Lincoln that he was uh, the kid captain, he's like, no way. Oh man, that is so cool. It's nice for him to get a treat. That's absolutely awesome, dude. How's it feel? Awesome. He has extra stuff to deal with and he takes it all in stride. He has overcome so much and never lets anything be his kryptonite. The program puts smiles on the faces of not only the pediatric patients, but also the Hawkeyes themselves. Especially freshman walk-on defensive back, Isaiah Cramey. For Isaiah, spending time with Lincoln is particularly special. As Lincoln is his nephew from a family that, until four years ago, Isaiah didn't even know existed. In 2009, Chris and Missy Ortman, Lincoln's parents, lost their three and a half month old daughter, Clara, to sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Less than a year later, their son Lincoln was born and diagnosed with pelvis syndrome. Lincoln's condition has required him to endure numerous surgeries, countless needles, and hundreds of doctor's visits. You start to get worried that is there something genetic going on? Do I have other brothers and sisters that should be checking their kids for this stuff? Chris Ortman was adopted at birth. And in August of 2011, he elected to open his adoption records to learn more about his genetic history. Within weeks, that decision led to a phone call with Clark Cramey, Chris's birth father. He said, you know, I always kind of knew you were out there and hoped you'd find me. After that, you know, he's very much like, I think of you just like I would any of my other kids. And that was kind of the point where he told me he had a daughter and then three more boys. One of those boys is Isaiah Cramey. Someone messaged me on Facebook saying that they were my brother and he's been wanting to reach out to us. And this is something that I had no clue about. And then one day my dad finally told me that he had a son 33 years ago and then to meet him, it was amazing, and he's an awesome brother. The day that we actually got to go there it was so cool to sit in the car and watch them hug for the first time. Surreal, right? Like, lots of stuff going on, lots of stuff to process, and you don't want to process it right now because it just feels good. How are you guys doing? Yeah. I'm really glad that I get to be where he's at college now because <laughs> It's a better chance to develop that relationship. The internet wasn't working, I was like, all right, whatever. Now I see Chris, like, every day. In September of 2014, the Ortman family relocated from South Dakota to North Liberty, Iowa, just 10 miles from Iowa City, 
so that Lincoln could receive long-term care at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital, and as a bonus, spend more time with Uncle Isaiah. To Lincoln, Isaiah's just this big, awesome dude that he gets to hang out with, and he really likes that. Isaiah, these are my new shoes. Here's my new shoes. Those are cool. <laughs> he's an awesome little kid, and he's been through so much in just the little time he's been on this earth. I hope I can do everything I can to make him proud and make him happy. I'm going to introduce you to my nephew. He think it'd be really cool to meet you guys. What's up, bud? What's up, buddy? His name's Lincoln. How's it going, man? What's up? His name's Jordan. Oh, wow. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Me being on the team, he just loves the thought of Iowa football now, and. Probably before this, he didn't know much about Iowa, and now it's just like, he's into it. Yeah, He keeps asking us when we're gonna get some season tickets, when are we gonna get to go to every game, and keep reminding him he's not quite old enough to go to every game. Age took a back seat on September 19th, when Lincoln experienced a rite of passage. Let's walk this way. Yeah! Attending his first Wait. Iowa football game in Kinnick Stadium. Yeah! as a Hawkeye kid captain, no less. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of Hawkeyes. Yeah. I grew up and I never cared at all about college football. I didn't know anyone that played. I didn't have any affiliation with any of the schools. I had no reason to be a fan. In the space of five years, I've gone from having no reason to give a rip about college football to a whole bunch of reasons. The story of each Hawkeyes kid captain is shared each week online and through social media. This week's kid captain is six-year-old Sean Peck from Tipton, Iowa, who will help lead the Hawkeyes, he hopes, to a victory over Maryland later today.